So in the previous unit, we looked at animations on a single sprite. And for a variety of reasons, when I first introduced Scratch to students, regardless of the level I'm working with, whether it's elementary students or college students or you as adult learners, I like to keep Unit 1 focused on one sprite. So you know, we spent most of our time in Unit 1 working on animating the cat, we, we looked at deleting the cat and replacing him with a ball at one point. But my only requirement for the homework from, from Unit 1 was that you animate a single sprite to do something. And I know that a few of you probably were very, very interested in, in making animations of multiple sprites, and that was fine. But that's not my requirement for Unit 1, because I want you to get started understanding the idea of an algorithm, putting together a sequence of blocks so that one thing can, can solve a task. In this unit, though, we're going to move to the next step, and we're going to use Scratch for storytelling. We're going to look at having multiple sprites working together to accomplish a goal, in this case, to tell a very simple story. And the very simple story that we're going to put together for this is to tell the world's worst knock-knock joke. So here it is. We're going to tell the knock-knock joke. Knock-knock, who's there? Philip, Philip who? Philip, my cup, I'm out of coffee. I told you it was a bad joke, but that's okay. We Sometimes the cheesy jokes are the better ones. And so we're going to tell that, that story here with this. And so the first thing we need to know if we're going to be the director of a movie, and I love that, uh, that analogy, that, that metaphor with this, especially as we move into storytelling here, we want to uh, consider ourselves as the director of a movie, and we want to tell... A particular story. So I need to hire the actors who are going to tell this. So I'm going to hire a boy actor and a girl actor. And again, I could come up to people here just to, to keep things simple. And I'm going to hire Abby. I like Abby's got a couple of dis different costumes here that we can see cycle through that, that we're going to use. Uh, and we're also going to hire Devon who's down here. Devin's got a couple of different costumes, and you could use any of the, the sprites here that you particularly wanted, but these are the sprites that, that, that I'm going to use in my story, and I'm going to delete Scratchy Cat now so we can tell this story between Devin and uh, Abby, okay? And Right now, Devin and Abby are telling their, their story in the middle of a snowstorm, right? We'd like to, if we're going to direct a movie, um, have a good set, have a good, uh, you know, background in all of this. And in fact, we can do that by switching over to, rather than working with the sprites and particular actors, we're going to switch over to the stage. And the stage is a sprite in and of itself um, in Scratch. It You can actually write code that's associated with the stage, and we'll do that in this unit. Um, it does the stage doesn't have all of the blocks because there's certain things that don't make sense. I mean, you know, motion doesn't make sense. The screen, uh, the backdrop of our of our stage isn't going to move around. There's a limited number of things that it can do, so it's a little bit scaled down. But we're going to use the stage here, and in fact, we want to. Cr put a different backdrop on that stage. And so you may have noticed this before, that next to the choose a sprite uh, pop-up of, of ways that we can pick different sprites to hire, we actually can do different backdrops. And they're the same four basic choices that we, always, that we had with sprites. We can choose from set backdrops that already come with Scratch. We can draw something on our own. We can pick something random. Or we could import something. Um, and so, you know, again, you could take a picture of your classroom or a picture of this front of your school and use that and just upload that as a photo. I'm going to go ahead and choose a backdrop that comes preloaded with Scratch, and I'm going to use an indoor backdrop. And I'm going to use this, I'm going to have my story maybe take place in this hallway in a school, right? And so here we've got this, this hallway, maybe in a school, and we've got Devin and Abby ready to tell their little knock-knock jokes. And again, you see me just kind of fidgeting with them here. Um, I want to get them kind of placed so that they look like they make sense in the in Scratch, that they make sense like they're actually standing here in the hallway. So that looks pretty good. Okay, And now we're ready to tell this knock-knock joke. And so we need to go back to that idea of the script, right? We need to take this three lines for the girl and two lines for the boy, and we want to give our sprites the directions that they're supposed to say those those lines. 
Okay, so I want Abby to say knock knock and who's there and all of that. And so what I'm going to do is tell her that when the green flag is clicked, I want her to go to her place. Right. Well, right now I'm not doing anything with motion, so I'm going to limit my my places, everybody, for the time being. I'm just going to kind of ignore it for now, um, other than maybe uh, making sure she goes where she is right now. So we'll do that. And then let's do the same thing for Devin. Let's tell him that when I say places everybody and action, I, when the green flag is pressed, I want him to go to where he is now. Those are good enough places to get started. And now I want Abby to start this whole thing. I want her to tell the knock-knock joke. And so she's supposed to say knock-knock. Right? And we do that, you might have noticed this when we were playing in unit one, that in the looks menu, there are some things that, that, that talk about saying and thinking things. And so I'm going to drag out this first block, say hello for two seconds, except I don't want her to say hello for two seconds. I want her to say knock knock. All right? And then I want Devin to say who's there? And then I want Abby, and notice what I'm doing, I'm, I mean, I've got two programs here. Each sprite has its own separate program. And so I want, you know, Abby's going to say knock, knock. Devin's going to say who's there. Abby's going to say Philip. And then Devin's going to say Philip who. And then Abby's going to say, Philip, my cup, I'm out of coffee. Okay. And again, so those are her three lines, and Devin's lines are who's there, and Philip who. Okay? And so now, if we run this program, when I press the green flag, what's actually going to happen is that each sprite, independent of the other, has its own little script, its own set of instructions. And so Abby's going to go to her places, everybody, and then say her lines. And Devin's going to go to his places, everybody, and then say his lines. And if we want to just kind of get started here and keep that idea of places, everybody, and action, we could add a wait one second between there, although this isn't necessary at all. But now it allows me to say, OK, places, everybody, and action, and Oh, wait, that doesn't look right, does it? Well, it's a good first step. You can see what's happening with this idea of parallelism, of two different sprites, each running their own program at the exact same time. And so the idea is that you know Abby says her lines, and Devin says his lines, and they each happen simultaneously, in parallel with each other. Now, of course, in real life, we don't tell Abby to say these three lines. What we say to Abby is, say knock-knock for two seconds, and then wait for Devin to finish his who's there, and then say Philip for two seconds, and then wait for Devin to say Philip who. Right? And, the, and now, the problem is that we can't really... Um, in Scratch, easily. Uh, those of you who know Scratch will know that there's there are ways there are ways to do this. But but from a simple perspective, when you're just getting started with with programming and and in particular with your students, the idea is I want to say knock knock for two seconds, and then what do I want to do? Well, I want to wait for Devin to say who's there, and of course in real life he'd say who's there, and as soon as he's done, I'm going to say Philip. But in in Scratch, I know that he's going to say who's there for two seconds. And so I know it's going to take him exactly two seconds to say who's there, and I don't say Philip until he's done. And so I really want to wait two seconds. right? So I say knock knock, I wait two seconds while Devin says who's there. I say Philip for two seconds, and then Philip's, or, uh, sorry, Devin says Philip who for two seconds, and I say Philip my cup. I'm out of coffee. I mean, and we can think about this as there's five lines in my play. Each line should take exactly two seconds. So I'm either speaking for two seconds or I'm simply waiting for two seconds. And now when I go to Devin, I want to do a similar kind of thing. I need to tell him what to do. And in his particular case, 
I want him to wait for two seconds, because Abby says, knock, knock. Then he says, who's there, for two seconds. Then she says, Philip, oops, for two seconds. And he says, Philip, who, for two seconds. And then she says, fill up the bathtub. I'm drowning. Now, strictly speaking, this last one isn't necessary, because the program's, you know, I'm not giving... Uh, Devon any directions after that, but I kind of like as I'm starting just to think about this as there's five two-second intervals, right? Similarly, when I join this together, you'll notice that this is just wait three seconds, and I could have had only one wait block and say wait for three seconds, but again, I kind of like to, to think about this. This wait one second is the you know, going to my places, everybody, and then getting started. And then the getting started is waiting two seconds. And so I'm going to leave them separate. And I wish there was a good way to show you both Devon and Abby's code at the same time. There's not. I can only kind of click through this. But let's just think about this. They're both doing similar things. They're both doing their places, everybody. They're both waiting one second to make sure that everybody's ready to go. And then we're going to say, knock, knock. And then Devon's going to say, who's there? And then Abby's going to say Philip, and we have this coordination of two second intervals. And so now when I say, okay, places everybody in action, we get knock, knock. Who's there? Philip. Philip who? Philip my coffee, or Philip my cup, I'm out of coffee. And now we've got our very first simple story using parallelism and coordination of time between two sprites.